Welcome back everybody to another OpenGL tutorial and in this quick video I just want to show you how you can make the load texture function which doesn't only load this very weird format which we have originally right here this R6, G, R5, G6, uh, B5 format because this is a very exotic format nobody really used that today we use mostly JPEGs and or BMP with some normal formats not like this PNG and image, image types like that so I will modify this load texture function to be able to load all of the texture with all of the formats so we don't have to worry about how we save an image. Uh, so let's get started. I will use a library called SDL image. You can uh, just go to Google and write SDL image to the search bar and uh, you can find uh, the probably the first result where you can download it. And to install it you do the same thing as you usually. So download it either Linux or Windows. Probably there are two versions up there download for your system and just simply put the header file into your folder where your compiler search for them and uh, put your lib file into the folder where your compiler search for them so in linux you use the usr slash in include slash sdl for the include file put put that the header file right here and usr slash lib and put your lib file right here and it should work uh, in Linux, there's the, if you use code blocks, just uh, use the search directory similarly as we did with the SDL library. So that is how you can set up this SDL image and this is what will allow us to load any kind of image. So include it, include SDL slash SDL underscore image dot h, this is the name of the header file. And there is just one function which you really should use in this function and this is the img load. This is the name of the function, so change this SDL load, IM, load BMP to img underscore load with capital D. So this uh, this is basically the same function, so similar, uh, you can handle it similarly, it's waiting for the file name and it will try to load it to the IMD. Uh, we can make a check right here because I did not make in the original to check if this image is actually loaded. So if this image is null, that means that this image was not loaded for some reason, although probably this never happens, but just make sure. Okay, and write out that IMG was not loaded and make a new line. Okay, that was simple and actually return from this function uh, with, I don't know, minus one. Right, so we loaded the image with the img load function, although that's just the first part of changing this function, because we have to convert this, uh, this image format into a format uh, which doesn't depend on the file, so it will not matter if the original file was saved with with this type, so GL unsigned short 565, or it was made with 8, 8 bit or uh, made with 32 bit, it doesn't really matter uh, because we will convert it to a format which we can interpret uh, in, uh, in this uh, texture load function. To do that, we use uh, another SDL function which I haven't used earlier. This is the SDL convert surface function. So let's make another surface, SDL surface, and I just call it IMG2. <laughs> and this will be called to SDL convert surface. This uh, function with three parameter and it convert convert the third first parameter to uh, with the uh, uh, pixel format which we define in the second parameter. I will do that in a moment. And the third par third parameter is just SDL SV surface to indicating that that this is a software surface, so we don't uh, store it in the uh, video card or something. Uh, so the second parameter is actually the pixel format, so write form in here and let's uh, make this format. This is a kind of complicated structure, but I will try to explain it as uh, good as I can. So the pixel format, this is the name of the structure which we are going to fill up, and I just call it form. And we can use the, the curly brackets to fill up the structure. The first parameter of this structure is actually null. Uh, this, uh, according to so I just uh, use according to the documentation. If you have an 8-bit image, so you want to convert it to an 8-bit image, you uh, pass something in here. Doesn't really matter. If you have a normal true, uh, true color image, just pass null there. The second parameter is how many bits uh, per component. So how many bits per pixel, that's right. So I want to convert it to 32 bits per pixel. Next is actually the number of bytes. 32 divided by 8 is actually 4, so 4 bytes. I'm not sure why both the bit per pixel and byte per pixel is needed, but it's some reason needed. I just follow whatever the manual said. Okay, the next four parameter is actually something called loss, uh, and I'm not sure if I can explain it that right, but basically that means that if the color component, so your R component, is you define it as 8-bit, but you only use, for example, 6-bit, that means there are 2-bit loss, so just write 2 in here. 
Actually, this doesn't really matter in this case because OpenGL is don't, uh, doesn't care about this, so just pass 4, 0 in here. The next parameter is actually the something called shift, so let me write here loss, and then the next is the shift, uh, and this is basically if you have a color like uh, 0x ff 0, 0, 0, 0, that's right, so actually two more zero, isn't it? I'm not sure. Okay, so yeah, two more zero. So this is, for example, the red component. Then you can pass uh, uh, how many uh, character do you want to shift it so this f will be in the first component right here so it will be between 0 and 255 so in this case we should pass for example uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 in this case because we want to shift it by 6 uh, yeah no I don't say it well no we should shift it by 32 I believe so because that is 8 and then 16 no 24 24 will be the number which we should uh, shift it so this f would not be here but would be the end of the number so it would be like 255 although this second parameter is not matter either for OpenGL because we don't use SDL function so just pass 0, 0, 0, 4 zeros I hope that I get it right so what 4 and 4 remaining it right the next parameter is actually what matters is the mask so the ne next is the mask this is a number which define where each component should be so for example in a case of 32 bit this is ff 0 0 0 0 0 0 this will this will be the, our mask this will indicate that the red component is in is in here in the number so the first uh, first byte is basically the red component then for the green component we write like this so this is the second component basically the second byte of this number will be uh, will be the green and so on to all others so let me type this so 0x ff the ff is basically the maximum of uh, one byte is 255 if you prefer like that although we shift this so it's not 255 anyway so i will write it as hexadecimal form because it's uh, it's more obvious in this way so basically we just say here that the first byte should be the red component and we write 0, 0 for the green component, 0, 0 for the blue component and 0, 0 for the alpha component and uh, let me just write, the, uh, let me just copy this and make the green component which should be the second byte, so ff right here the blue component which is the third byte, so 1, 2, 3, 4 and here comes the ff and finally the alpha component which is just the last byte of the number is basically the alpha so how we get basically the number so we have a pixel number so anyway we have some big number so we basically end that together with this so for example we have the number pixel and then we use the binary end operator and we end it together with this color for example and if everything goes well this uh, only the R component will be uh, will be uh, presented in here right so this is the format and I hope that I didn't screw this up okay and two more parameter remaining one is the color key which doesn't matter again because we don't use SDL color keying we will use the OpenGL so just pass any number you prefer and the last is the alpha. I'm not completely sure about what this alpha is because we read the alpha values from the image but I guess if there are no alpha channel in the original image then we just pass 255 minutes completely opaque cube so it will be not be transparent. Right, we are almost finished. Actually, uh, let's check if this uh, convers uh, conversion was successful. So check if this IMG2 is containing something. So, And that was basically all of this structure and we passed this structure right here actually the address of the structure right here as the second parameter of the SDL convert surface and if we try to convert this image to this format which we have defined here in the in this pixel format uh, structure and we use the SDL as we search so it will be on the memory right so if the IMG2 is equal to null then obviously we have some kind of problem so let me just write out almost the same error message except the IMG2 right one more thing is remaining to do is that actually we pass the img2 pixels right here in the low texture and the format of this is 32 bits so it has to be an integer and this is unsigned integer actually and the format is 8 underscore 8 underscore 8 underscore 8 this is the format which we are going to use and the other thing is that the internal format and the image format should be RGBA because we will store the RGBA component, so the alpha component as well. And I'm pretty sure that's all. We just free the SDL free 
surface we just free the IMG2 and we are finished so it uh, said it will be a short tutorial so what we have done here is use the IMG load function to load any kind of surface then we will uh, convert this IMG uh, with the convert surface to this pixel format I defined here so it will be a 32-bit image and the numbers uh, so the different color components will be according to this math the alpha value if there are no alpha value is the 255 so the maximum okay and uh, that's pretty much it we use the glRGBA to store the alpha components as well both the internal format both the format in the yeah the, the internal format and both the image format I use the unsigned integer 8888 because 8 components R, 8 components B so on and I pass the IMG to pixels and that's pretty much all sh uh, that should be done in order to be able to load any kind of image so let me try this out I already have a uh, JPEG image in the same folder and I just call it IMG or my IMG doesn't really matter and in the init let's just load it so my IMG equal to load texture and load the texture my IMG uh, load the texture what did I call that uh, chest.jpg so chest.jpg this will be the demonstration for the mip mapping by the way this ch chest.jpg image and here I already drawn a simple quad literal with the immediate mode and I assign the texture coordinate as well with GL texture 2F to every single vertex so it's a simple 4x4 uh, four four, uh, quad uh, 4 uh, uh, distance from the camera and let's bind this texture before I use it so GL bind texture and GL texture to uh, 2D and my IMG so we bind the texture so OpenGL will know what texture do we want this uh, quad to be and actually before I do that let me enable the GL enable GL texture 2D as it will not work and I uh, think that pretty much covers it so let me try to compile it and then run it okay uh, of course undefined reference because I forget to use as LSDL underscore image flag now, right so it's loaded let's try to run it and as you can see this chess image is right here although this is uh, I mean this is just a black and white image but uh, you can of, of course load any kind because this tutorial uh, was really short I thought I may do something a little bit different I can probably show you how this alpha component actually work so I will create a new image by 512 by 512 and uh, let me make some colors in it so I just go to filters render clouds and uh, plasma okay and just make some color doesn't really matter in this case and let me add an alpha channel to this image by uh, pr pr uh, pressing the right mouse button in the layer and add alpha channel now I can delete part of this image so let me just uh, use this uh, eraser tool in the toolbox and erase some part of this image for example like this I will erasing the part of the image okay and then if I save this image save as to the same folder as I am in so in my desktop and OpenGL folder uh, I already did a little bit of testing and there is some problem with the PNG image and I'm, I'm can, I can't find out what it is probably because again this incompatible version things I think I have talked about in the past because in my other computer the PNG image is perfectly loaded and it, it's, it's just beautiful but for now I will just use GIF image instead of PNG this uh, doesn't uh, provide such a good uh, way to use the alpha channel as a PNG image uh, by the way try it out yourself if the PNG is actually loaded or not for me it does not load so I will save it as a GIF image which actually loads and support transparency so I will save it replace the file and just convert it with the default setting that uh, doesn't really matter okay that was simple and then I will load this image in the, I call this uh, plasma.gif and let me enable transparency so in here gl enable gl blend so we will use the blending and the gl blend function and just use the normal gl src oops gl src alpha and gl src 1 minus alpha so this will be the blending function and if everything goes correctly uh, gl 1 minus src alpha like that i believe 
yes okay and if everything goes correctly as you can see now part of this image is transparent so although I have a rectangle right here but because the image is partially transparent li uh, like places uh, so all around then we can see through it actually we would see what uh, what is through it but there is nothing just blackness okay so if you use PNG image you can use partially transparent so like 50% pr uh, transparent so you can make scopes for example for weapon or something but uh, yeah that's uh, pretty much it were all which i wanted to talk about for some reason the png doesn't work in this computer okay so i just thought i'd make a quick video about this subject because i want to use it in glsl in the fps game and i don't want to make there because if someone not following the fps series obviously uh, they will not understand how i can load jpeg image in the glsl tutorial or something so this was it i hope you find it useful thanks for watching and have a great